So um, here's a strawberry plug. Here's the bare roots. And that's also frigo or, or cold storage ones where they, they pick them in the, I guess the spring or the fall, and they store them for about four or five months. They freeze them actually. And that's what I purchased. And when, they, when you put those in the ground, they just pop out like crazy. And that's where we had a lot of runners. And so I went back to doing plugs. Plugs are going to be about 35, 37 cents a piece. No, nope. all of these are come from tips of the strawberry plant. Okay. So they come out of Canada mostly, and they'll just cut the tips off, put them in flats in the greenhouse, and grow them out that way. So these are dug from the ground. Okay, so they'll be they're already producing. They'll go and shred the tops off, and uh, and dig them out of the ground. Okay. So pretty much only strawberry seeders are strawberry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can <laughs> buy strawberry seed, but it's you know, one seed is going to be maybe different than the other seed. So that, to me, that just seems like a lot of work. So, but for the breeders, that's fine. Um, again, many plants, are per you can buy them online. There's a bunch of companies you can buy them online from. I always highlight don't buy them in the spring and plant those because it's really the wrong time. And I, I tried it in Lubbock before I started when I was gardening there, and I just couldn't get anything to grow. Um, so they need the cold temperatures. This is what a strawberry plant looks like if you don't get enough fertilizer or the pH is off. Okay, you're going to have some chlorotic looking plants. All right, that's a little low tunnel in my backyard. Okay, so it's similar to what a high tunnel looks like. And I can raise and lower that and grow strawberries under that. So that helps with the wind protection, heats up the, the air temperatures and helps the plants grow a little bit faster. All right, I have to be able to see what I'm saying. Oh yeah, this is my spring planted. And this is my fall planted, so you can see a big difference. So you can plant in spring if you want. I just wouldn't suggest it. All right, planting depth. With the plugs, it's a little bit easier than with the crowns. You just want to make sure that you don't plant too deep, because if you do, you're going to cover up those crowns, and that could cause the crowns not to grow or get diseased. So be careful when you're planting. And you also don't want to have them too shallow, because if the roots are exposed, they're going to flop around, and they're just not going to grow very well either. So it's you know, right here is perfect in the center there, okay? All right, raised beds, we already talked about that. The good benefit of that is to let that excess moisture drain away from the roots as much as possible, and it also helps with the berries just hanging there. So that's some of my berries there. I think that's San Andreas, so a nice long conical shape. Um, strawberry nutrition. First couple of years, I always had chlorotic leaves until I started lowering the pH, again, with the sulfur and using the um, high acid formulation. And I, I put fertilizer on once or twice a week. My plants are nice dark green, and you want to make sure that they stay dark green. So don't, probably don't worry about over fertilizing them because they, they use up quite a bit of fertilizer. Okay. Uh, nutrients, again, uh, we talked a little bit about this. This is great because I've already kind of, I can skip over some of these because we've already kind of talked about it. But, you know, here's some different types of fertilizer. miracle Grow. if you have a small garden, you know, miracle Grow is fine. It's readily taken up by the strawberry plants. Uh, but I would probably suggest trying the mere acid just because it's going to lower that pH. All right. Um, here's what, uh, you see the ones in the center look a little bit yellow. The ones on the left, I've I put the uh, sulfur on, and then the ones in the middle, or in the, on the right, I didn't. So you can see the difference in the color of the plants. So just by dropping that pH a little bit and adding that sulfur, it's really going to help uh, the plants grow better, be darker, greener, and pick up more nutrients, and ultimately a higher berry number. All right, strawberry irrigation. We've talked a little bit about this as well. You don't want to overwater, okay? because they don't like wet roots. Their roots don't go very deep. Um, a lot of times, you know, if you have a sandy soil, you may end up watering uh, once a day. You know, just, just basically go around and check and make sure your, your soil is still moist. If you step on it and ooze comes up, you know, it's probably overwatered, okay? Um, so they do like plenty of water. Um, and that just shows the drip line down the center again. All right, salts. Salts are not good for our strawberries either. Okay, this was a, an experiment done at El Paso where we looked at two different varieties. And where can salts be? 
in, in the water, yes. in your soil. Are your fertilizers salty? Yes. yes, they can be salty too. So you can exacerbate the problem by adding too much. Um, but certain varieties, this one, Albion, really the EC is the salt, basically salt contact. So the higher it went, it really didn't affect. Maybe a little bit of the growth, but didn't affect the overall leaves. But here you can see on Chandler, they just got yellower and yellower as they went up. So it's always good to check your soils, check your water, especially if you're growing strawberries, okay, because they can be sensitive to that. Yes? Will uh, compost tea be a good uh, method of fertilizing? The question was compost tea. Can it be a good method of fertilizing? The answer is yes but I would try to keep the compost tea off the berries as much as possible, okay? I was in, yeah, drip system. drip system, or if you're gonna water it, water it around and don't touch the foliage. I was in a, anybody know where East Timor is, the country? Oh, okay, it's right between Indonesia and uh, Australia. I, got, I went there on a project because they wanted to grow strawberries in the tropics. So they grow them up in the mountains, but they, they're very poor, they, were they made compost tea and they were just dumping it on top of the plants. Now, if you went to their compost pile, you know they're using chicken manure and cow manure and it really wasn't that well composted. So they're just adding E. coli or some other foodborne illnesses to it, okay? So be careful with that. Compost tea have enough nitrogen? Um, you have to have it checked. I mean, you may want to, if you do it, yeah, it, it's hard to tell. But you said it really doesn't need potassium. Uh, potassium it does need, but uh, nitrogen is probably the major lacking nutrient. Um, strawberry pests, they get just about everything. Aphids, spider mites, white flies, thrips, ligus bugs, and worms, okay? Um, diseases, botrytis gray mold, cercospora, anthracnose, and I'll show you right here real quick. Um, these are the insect pests. Here's the aphids on the top left. Spider mites, this is about 10,000 times as big as most mites are. Um, and that's spider mite webbing around the uh, strawberry plant, and I've already had that this year. If you've got spider webbing around your leaves, you, you're, you're too late. And I can already see that my, some of my plants have suffered. Yeah, they are a pain. And the thing to get them controlled is you gotta get underneath that leaf, because that's where they're at. That's where they're feeding, okay? Okay, one thing, my biggest problem is slugs. Slugs can be a problem, sluggo bait. Put that around and that does a pretty good job. Okay. okay. So, all right. Um, we'll go to the next one. An you can see anthracnose is just those ugly spots, lesions on the berries. And that's usually occurs during wet periods. So if the berries get wet, they can uh, get anthracnose. Um, the other thing is if you're in, say you go to a U pick and they've got some uh, strawberries that look like that. You want to make sure you clean off your clothes, your boots, and everything because I've, I've carried that back into my fields when I never had it before. So you need to be careful with that. Botrytis is down in the bottom. That was after a flood. So it, they, just, they just turned white almost the next day, okay? Um, powdery mildew is just on the leaves. You may have that more down here than, than I would because we're in a drier area. But the powdery mildew just primarily con uh, con uh, is on the leaf surface, but that'll slow down your plant growth and cause the leaves to die. What's the best thing to do with that? Because I had a big problem with that. There are some, if you, if you don't want to use chemicals, there are some uh, bi uh, biocontrol products. Uh, one's uh, potassium bicarbonate, which is actually a chemical, but it's, it's labeled for organic use. Uh, the product's I called... baking soda, and that's what I use. That's what potassium bicarbonate is. It's basically baking soda. So. That, that should work, but that one only is a curative. It doesn't prevent it, yeah. okay? And that's why we're looking at some of these other living biological products to see what they can do. All right, vertebrates, raccoons, mice, birds, rabbits, they all cause trouble. So uh, if you want your berries, if you wanted to eat them, you might better keep them protected and you have to secure that area too. I had grapevine in my backyard. I grew some beautiful grapes. First year birds got them, the next year I Put, thought I'd be smart, put a bird netting around it, the squirrels went underneath and got them. So <laughs> need to make sure that they're well protected. All right, so we put bird netting around our whole tunnel on, on the windows and on the doors. You can do bird netting on a low tunnel too. Yeah, you can do, yeah, that's what we do. After we take our plastic off, because we've already had birds coming after it, because we got hedgerows on the side of our farm and we've got thousands of birds. And so we put bird netting over the low tunnels, over the hoops. And you still have to take them off when you're picking 
but at least you're having berries. So, yeah, and here's the weed management. I like to put, we used to, we never used herbicides, we always used a hoe, and I just got tired of hoeing, even though it's relaxing for me. Um, <laughs> but this is reusable weed fabric, and we purchased that on Amazon, and it does a pretty good job, and it'll last five, ten years if you keep it in good shape. And it just makes it cleaner too, so. Uh, harvesting, this, these were some berries that I looked at, I just took a photo of it in the store just two days, or three days ago. And you can see it's just white on the end, so you know that's not going to be very ripe. And these are the ones that, w that we've picked, so. Again, you're going to have to get rid of them faster because they're, they're ripe, but they taste a heck of a lot better. Pricing, I've already kind of talked about that. If you, if you do sell them, I mean, you know, if you want to do a, you know, a roadside stand, don't undersell yourself, okay, because they take a lot of work. So don't undersell yourself if you do that, yeah. So here's a good website to go to, strawberryplants.org. Um, we do have a production guide, it's mostly for commercial. I do have a low tunnel strawberry guide that you can get off of Aggie Horticulture or just email me. I think I have my email address up next. Um, but strawberryplants.org is a good site. It's got list uh, all, pretty much all the varieties there is, how to grow them, how to, look at, uh, how to uh, harvest them, transplant it. It's got a lot of good information on it. So I hate to say it, but you don't always have to go to Texas A&M. Especially for, stra especially for strawberries. We're, we're, we're still learning. North Carolina but State. North Carolina State. Really for but there's my email address and phone number if you want to contact me about strawberries. Uh, sorry I had to rush it here a little bit at the end, but you've been a great group, a lot of good questions. Hopefully it makes some sense. I know sometimes I have to go a little bit smaller in area because I'm thinking on acres, but uh, hopefully it, it serves you well. So